Welcome everybody. Today, Lucas and I will be reviewing Hideo Keanu's latest live action movie, Shin Kamen Rider. What do we think about it? Did we like it? Did we not like it? What worked? What didn't? Stay tuned and find out. Let's just preface. I want to preface this right now. Okay. I know nothing about Common Rider. I know um, very basic things about Common Rider. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just give a, a non spoiler basic thoughts of Shin Common Rider right from the get go. Lucas, let's start with you, you lucky son of a bitch, because you got to see it in theaters, oh, and I'm yes, so envious of you. Now, there's. I love whenever we get the releases of these and seeing them in theaters. One, to just support it, and two, I'm seeing. Shin Kamen Rider in a movie theater. Like, come the fuck on. That's fucking awesome. With this kind of stuff, I'm very easy to please. I won't lie. I'm, I'm very straightforward. I'm like, oh, I think this is sick. Oh, the fucking fights are awesome. And something like that. I think the story was pretty good for the most part, too. Um, I don't... I love Hano. I don't think this was, like, super his, like, top work. But I don't mean that as a bad thing. It's just I feel like there, this isn't as nuanced to say as something like Shin Godzilla. I know a lot more about Kamen Rider now that I've watched the movie and I've sort of studied it yeah, a little yeah. bit because I was like, what does this mean? Yeah. Oh, they just name dropped this. What is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't seen any of the shows. The only thing that I really know about Common Rider is Starfish Hitler. <laughs> I just love how the first thing Hitler <laughs> I went into this movie with high expectations. One because it's Hideakiano. Yeah, yeah. And in and, and, and Hideakiano I trust. Yes. You know? Visually I thought it looked great. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the experimentation with low low quality cameras and, yeah, and, yeah. and camcorders totally. and iPhones and stuff. I really liked that. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later, but I thought it was a very solid movie. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I think I enjoyed this, which is funny because I don't really know too much about Kamen Rider. I like this more than Shin Ultraman. Um, yeah, yeah, I hear a lot of people say that too, which is fine. And, and which, yeah, yeah. And for the record, I, I quite enjoyed. We, you and I yeah, did an entire yeah. video talk about Shin Ultraman, yeah. and I and I think this is the thing that sets it above Ultraman. Is I think Hideaki Anno is a better overall director mm -hmm. at pulling out performances and making very specific decisions. He's apparently kind of a pretty loosey goosey director to a fault, apparently, because there's a bit there's some drama yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting into fights with his choreographer and stuff like that because he thought that the action scenes looked too stylized. He wanted them to look more visceral, yeah. but he wasn't very specific on how, which is a problem when, when you're a director. Yeah, you need it, to know it really you is. Like... I can't say I would recommend it to anyone who isn't already a fan of the genre. Yeah, I think this is a hard sell for like people who don't... Who, like... and the same with Shin Ultraman, too. Yeah, I had that with Shin Ultraman. The only one of the, the trilogy, I should say, that I haven't... I can say just about anyone would like it with Shin Godzilla. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you yeah, not. yeah, yeah. And I think both both Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider embellish that because they, for yes. a while, feel like just multiple episodes that are strung together to make a coherent plot. Strung yeah. together in a compilation. I mean, I mean that as a compliment, too. I don't mean that actually as a compliment. I, I, have mi I have mixed feelings about this, and I had mixed feelings about that with Shin yeah, Ultraman yeah, totally. as well. Uh, so from this point forward, I want to say spoiler alert. Okay. Uh, if you if you haven't seen it, it's only been out for a little bit on on Amazon. It is on Amazon Prime. The big thing that I really had liked about this movie is that despite me not knowing anything about Common Rider, I was able to follow what was happening. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And I think that's a big thing that I was that I was worried yeah. about going into this was I was so afraid that I'm like. Am I not going to know what's going on? Not the case. I was able to follow what was happening. It was confusing at points, but I think very deliberately so. And I was able to follow what was happening. And to me, that is the sign of, of, a, of a good movie almost immediately. Is Despite not knowing anything about the franchise, I was able to follow. I think especially, too, because the opening of Shin Kamen Rider is so immediate. It, it is starts, the definition of a media. Like, yeah. I honestly feel like, too, like most of the trailer stuff is like that first scene. I don't think any action scene in this movie lives up to that first five minutes yeah, of I can this movie. That. I can it was that. so good. I love that action scene so I, I love much. the fucking, like, I, I think we said this to each other when that trailer first dropped. The fucking shot where he grabs two of the guy's heads and slams them to the ground and blood yeah. just fucking scatters all over the place. Because <laughs> that's something I was not expecting no, was the amount no. of gore. Aesthetically, I think this movie is astonishing. Yeah. Like, I love how this movie looks, both how it's shot, how it's edited, how it's paced. I think the action in, in Shin Kamen Rider 
is better than Shin Ultra Man. I, and yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with the style because these are just regular people yeah. versus giant monsters. I agree with you, you know? that completely. I, I think it kind of had to be because of that alone. Like, there's yeah. not the scale to do. These are like people-sized characters, so they can they can go more intense with it and more. And like, that's also just Kamen Rider as a whole. You know, it's intense, like like dynamic posing and kicks and stuff like that. that that's crucial. Like, you need that. Yeah, like for 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 Kamen Rider. Like, like the Rider kick yeah. is iconic. Bono <laughs> clearly wanted something a little bit more raw yeah. with the action sequences, and you get that. The way how the action is cut and the fact that they use GoPros and iPhones in particular to get these like wicked wide angle shots. I actually, I don't and... mean to interrupt you, Adam. I was thinking of you when those scenes came up because I remember we talked course, about that too. Yeah. I was thinking, but, we well, we did. We yeah. talked about that. <laughs> I kept yeah. it I was thinking, for, that, for the record, I was thinking of you when I was watching this movie. Ah. I was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I miss my buddy. Riri Kitamura directed a movie called Versus which is a zombie movie, but it's like an action oh, zombie I've movie. Always heard, I've always heard of Versus. Yeah. And it's wonderful. This movie felt way more like Versus than it did a tokusatsu movie. Uh, particularly when it came to, to the action and the framing and the camera work. Because Versus is shockingly low budget. And like there's a lot of film grain and there's a lot of like these really experimental camera moves and, and, and frantic cutting and editing. And there's a lot of film grain and, and stuff like that. It looks ugly. For a reason. Yeah, yeah. Shin Kamen Rider reminds me of that. Not so much in terms of the film grain and the ugliness per se, but in the fact that they're using a lot of quick edits, almost excessively so. It's a lot of shaky amateur camera work. Like, there's several shots where it's clearly them just holding an iPhone. And like, hardly any yeah, image yeah. stabilizer at all. And, like, some of them have, like, really high shutter speed, so it's, like, really crisp yeah, yeah. looking, and there's not much for motion blur. And it, it gives this this really fantastic, grungy look mm -hmm. that I loved. Some of the cuts were so crazy. You're like, what? what? Huh? Yeah. what? Huh? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and it works because it, it gets your blood pumping, yeah. and it makes you want to know, know, know what's happening. A reviewer I watched of this movie, because some guy did a review of it called High Seas, who I don't really care for, as a, but I liked this video because he called the movie unrefined fun. Mm -hmm. It's very visceral. It's very in your face. Yeah. It's very experimental with its camera work. Yeah. And it's he called it shooting without a storyboard. And that's really what it feels like. Like if okay. you look at the behind yeah. the scenes footage of this film, you have like a high res Aerie Alexa shooting it. You have a medium camcorder shooting it. And then you have some guy running around beside them with an iPhone. And it looks silly, but when you edit it together, it came out so good. Yeah, it yeah. looked so raw, yeah. so real, so grungy. And it's like, I miss that in my action films. Yeah, You kind of said it for the most part, but I think that it also helps that the series this is specifically about is Kamen Rider. I think you can get away with that with something like Kamen Rider a lot more than something like Ultraman. We talked about this already, but I will say it again. It's like you can get away with these high-paced cuts from different kinds of cameras because it fits the tone of the media it's it's adapting right now, you know? I love how henchmen just come out of nowhere yeah. <laughs> in, in in this entire opening sequence. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed this, but, you know, they, they blow up the trucks, right? Yeah, yeah. And the motorcycle flies off of this ledge, and it's, like, 300 feet down. And Ruriko, the girl, yeah, yeah. she looks just fine yeah. after falling 300 feet. I love how it's an obvious Ruriko dummy. Yeah. That the spider is throwing over her sho over yeah. his shoulder. Yeah. Like, I love the building exploding. First off, they shoot it from, like, 600 different angles, which is awesome. Yeah. The, the building exploding. But but Hongo, who's our, our main character, Hongo, mm -hmm. he's perfectly fine when when the building explodes, and so is the bike. Oh, yeah. Like, the, like it's suddenly just outside. They're just oh, outside, yeah. not a scratch. And I'm like, this is awesome. And then I was fully on board when the next time we see the spider augment and all of a sudden he's got like 20 guys around him <laughs> out of nowhere that was the moment i'm like i love this i <laughs> yeah. i understand <laughs> this is awesome no i, you know, I believe so it like... honestly it seems like that would be an intentional decision they made with it like yeah. i mean to me an example of style over substance was that entire um it was like the bit the, the motorcycle fight before the final fight where there was a bunch of like grasshopper augs and like they're fighting that i think that I, that's one of my favorite action sequences in the movie actually i thought that's oh really because yeah, i like that I, didn't, I didn't really care for that i was like oh. okay come on move on move on i want oh. i want the fight with the with hongo and the other guy 
versus the butterfly og. Oh yeah, I, that's yeah. what I want. That's what I was I wanted more than that. Uh, because I want to comment something about the the final fight in this movie. Ichimoji. Was yes, like, yeah. Ichimoji. So when they're yep. fighting uh the the butterfly og, uh who's like the true villain of the movie, what I love about that fight is. It starts off, you know, typical, like, Kamen Rider fights. Like, the, the Butterfly Og is so powerful. He's pushing them away with a one punch. And it slowly devolves from that to literally, and I cannot stress this enough, and I mean this in the most loving way, two men in leather costumes just fucking grappling one another on the fucking I was going to mention that. Oh, Goddamn same thing. I, I was going to mention that. I, when I saw this in theaters, I literally, in my brain, I was just like, Oh, please have some random person walk into the movie when it's just these two guys in their leather outfits grunting and well, fucking I, I, one I thought it worked. I, I, I agree, thought it. I agree with you. I, I thought it worked geniusly because I'm like I thought it fit with the movie yeah. and like the themes no, I totally of agree. the movie. No, yeah. How suddenly it's like it's all big and bombastic, but all of a sudden when it gets down to this this personal level. It's just these two dudes barely hanging yeah. onto consciousness, no, I, I, fighting I, on the ground. That was never a negative for me. I mean that as as yeah. nothing but a positive. As yeah. but a positive. I thought the acting in this movie was phenomenal. Yeah, uh, I love the acting. The actor who plays Hongo is actually uh, does amazing. There's this little bit to him that I that I really like. It's almost like he's uncontrollably shaking oh, yeah. in several scenes in this movie, particularly when Ruriko dies. Yeah, you see it a lot. It, it both fits with his antisocial nature. Yeah. But also the fact that he's now part grasshopper. Yeah. And I love how the actor doesn't play it up. It's this good balance. And and it's clearly him holding in a fuck ton of emotion. Yeah. yeah. And it's just leaking out a little bit. And I'm like, that's unbelievably difficult to do as an actor. Yeah. I love how Hayato is basically the antithesis yeah. of Hongo. <laughs> he's like the opposite. He's like fully like versed in it already. Just like, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But both, they're both loners. In fact, that's a, that seems to be the theme of the movie is that these are a bunch of people who are very antisocial, very loner. Yeah. They then need to come together, get past this loneliness of theirs, yeah. which is a very Ano thing and team up. To fight a bigger threat. Yeah, I mean, like, also, too, like, the, the, the brother of Ruriko is that it kind of fits into his arc, too, where it's he experienced yeah. all this tragedy and shut himself out from the world, which is very, very on uh, Even, like, like the kind of, like, his end goal was kind of like the human <laughs> instrumentality project, too. But um, but even then, he's shutting himself away from the world, too. So that fits into that theme, too, as well, with the main villain. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. It, like, villain, but, like, I feel like at the same yeah. time, it's... You yeah, because it. because you have Ichiro. Yeah. He's he's the butterfly og. Yeah. He he's a loner because he feels his family betrayed him. Yeah. yeah. And and Shocker has kind of indoctrinated him into thinking that his family betrayed him when really they weren't. Yeah. But it looked like they were. Ruriko is emotionally stunted from from a loving but overbearing dad. Yeah. Is what I got out of that. Yeah. Because there's that scene where she she said, "Sorry, I'm being so picky, but I just wanted to be pampered for the first time in my life." Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of liked that moment. Yeah, I did too. Just a little, little human moment. And and Hongo can't get over his father, seeming who was a cop, seeming to think more of the man who stabbed him in the hostage crisis than his own family. Yeah, yeah. Which is very Hideakiano. Yeah. And then you have Hayato, who's who is a second comma writer, who seems to think that the the, the best way to get things done is by himself. Uh which is why he is more in tune with his emotions, I think. Yeah. Than the other two, because he's just like, no, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to do it by myself. And it also fits that he's a cameraman. Yeah. I think this one has the best overall characters. I think I can agree with you on that, just because I feel like it almost to an extent kind of had to. I agree. Because... And, and I think that's why. Yeah, because, again, these aren't, like, giant monsters. We're, we're, these are actual people, you know? I'm not saying that as, as like a as like a talking down point. Not at all. No, no. Uh, I'm saying that as more as a compliment because yeah, these feel like people. You know, they they feel like actual people. They needed to. Yeah. Yeah. But the big one is subtlety. Mm -hmm. This movie is full of it, and I think that's why when it, when I mentioned earlier, I think Hideaki Anno was just the better director out of the two of them. Yeah. And Shinji Higuchi, and this is excluding Shin Godzilla. Hongo shaking Ruriko's regret when uh, talking with the wasp Ugg. Yeah which I wound up, didn't think I'd care so much about, but I wound up caring because of their performances. Yeah, yeah. Hayato coming to realize that he wants to help those who helped free him from Shocker. Mm -hmm. That's good shit. Yeah. In a movie where there's a lot of exposition in typical Hideaki Anno fashion, 
it's all done through their performance. I also think it, it's just a testament to show that because, like you said, there's a ton of subtlety in something called in something like Shin Kamen Rider that ha that also on the other side of the spectrum needs to be like slightly over the top with its action and stuff like that. It's nice to see that it has that subtlety to it as well. Well, I think it needed to because yeah. it almost offsets it and balances it out. That, that's that's what that, I was trying to get at, yeah. The whole movie is extremely episodic, which I expected yeah. because of Shin Ultraman. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that camp too. I don't mind it. I think these did it better than I've seen in other stuff try and do something like that. But I also think it mm -hmm. also helps because it kind of pays respect to the fact that these are based on television shows. I feel like if it was something like, I don't if like Godzilla tried to do that, to me, I feel like that's just... I don't think that's. I don't think it would work yeah. either, which is why work. I think I think Shin Godzilla is structured the way that it yeah. is. Yeah. It's because it's based on a movie, yeah. inspired by a movie. Therefore, we're going to structure it like a movie. Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider, based off shows, not just any shows, but shows from the '60s. We're going to structure it like a show from the '60s. Yeah. yeah. And I think that structure hurts the movie, and I think it's what keeps them from reaching wider audiences. I think if this movie had about thirty more minutes. It would have been a better or a more sound, just movie. I think I think the biggest detriment of this movie is that it feels like this is what I have wrote down word for verbatim, and I was okay. taking these notes as I was watching the movie. All right, okay. It feels like I've stepped into the Game of Thrones series two episodes before the first season finale. <laughs> And that's the one criticism I've heard generally regarded from, from not just this movie, but even Shin Ultraman and even Shin Godzilla, even though I disagree with that with Shin Godzilla, okay. is that the characters are extremely lacking. And I half agree with it. I think I can agree with that with Shin Ultraman. I don't think I can agree with that with Shin Kamen Rider, truthfully. I think there's enough character in Shin Kamen Rider where I can get to know them a lot more compared to like Shin Ultraman. Well, there's less characters, which helps. True, true. A lot. But I never felt mm -hmm. like the movie overstayed its welcome at all, and there was never a point where I felt like it was losing something because it didn't have an additional 30 minutes or vice versa, you know? Uh, so I'm not sure how I feel entirely about that. I think it's actually a pretty good runtime, and it does everything it needs to in its runtime. I want to agree with you so bad. Mm -hmm. I do, because what we get is great. Yeah. But I wanted more. Oh, yeah. That's that, the thing is like I I would not scoff at more, but the thing is like from what is there, I think it serves its story and what it's trying to tell and its purpose. The big one that I say this needed to be fleshed out more. This really needed to be fleshed out more. Okay, was the relationship between Hongo and Ruriko. If we had Evangelion moments where the two of them just doing trivial work, just wandering around Tokyo being themselves yeah <laughs> i would care about them more i would understand their relationship more it will and it would make scenes where she goes sorry i've been such a pain i just wanted to be pampered yeah it would have added more weight to a statement like that in evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 you had the scenes where ray was just sort of wandering around this village oh yeah those scenes are great yeah I wanted that. Yeah. The reason why I think those scenes work so well in Ava is because it's Ray specifically. If it was any other character, like, obviously it w I would enjoy it, but it's the fact that that Ray is kind of learning how to just be a person and how to be alive and get her identity as well. The whole crux for me is that, like, I would not be against more stuff like that in, in Shin Kamen Rider, but I don't feel like it not being there, like, took too much away from me personally. Cause I half agree with you. No, I got it. I got it. Like, like, I got like it. you know, like I'm like, cause I like what's here. I just wanted more. The actors who play Hongo and Ruriko have amazing chemistry together. Yeah. I wanted to see them interacting more outside of this crazy universe. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I would have loved to have had a scene where Ruriko goes, "I'm going to buy a new dress." I and, and I think Ano is at his best when he does stuff like that. Like, I love the scene of her her explaining, her, her telling Hongo, revealing all this stuff yeah. to Hongo because she finally feels comfortable with him yeah. and Hongo revealing stuff to her because he feels comfortable with her. Ano is the best when he's doing stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And to me, those are my favorite scenes of the movie too. Not as much as I love the over-the-top action scenes, I love these little tiny character moments yeah. because I think if we had a little bit more, it would have had more weight to her to her. Yeah, death. I, I totally, I totally And it certainly would have had more weight at the end with with um with uh, Hayato, I think he was the other one. Uh, yeah, um, 
it w- with him taking up the the common rider mask yeah kind of deal and also would have added more weight to hongo's death yeah as well i yep. think especially with him dying with ichiro yeah yeah we would have had more with that um because right now it sort of feels like we have some really steep peaks that we're trying to climb over I think if we had that extra 30 minutes, it would have rounded them out just okay. a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. It would have made the journey a little bit more easier to swallow. I want to know what Shocker in, what Shocker's impact is on everyday life. Yeah. yeah and the, like, you know, like what, what's that doing that's the and stuff I like that. Because I feel like it, it's kind of... Because Shocker isn't really resolved. No, Shocker isn't exists. resolved at all. It still exists this is, in the world. I like, guarantee you, you have not seen this movie. But this movie, actually, Shin Kamen Rider, reminded me a lot of two things. Uh, one is it reminded me of the movie Scanners, which is seen. where that famous head explosion comes from. I have not seen Scanners. Where you see the, yeah. I know uh, the head explosion, it's... but I have not seen Scanners. I mean, before, before all like the later stuff came out, like, like Wayland Yutani from fucking Alien. Yeah. Like before, like yeah. obviously the other movies came out, but it was just kind of like an alien alone. It's just like, why, what is this company want with this? Yeah. And, and I would have liked yeah. to have seen that company's impact on everyday society. Yeah, that, would be, that would be cool. Like how did they become so big? There has to be a reason why. It's also important to note that the head, head, the head of Shocker is now just an AI in this universe. It's not like a person now. The head of Shocker is an AI because the original, I think it's like the original like creator like killed himself or something during the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the other thing that this reminded me of is that Shocker kind of reminds me of the alien invasion from Godzilla vs. Gigan. Oh, okay. Because in Godzilla vs. Gigan, the aliens are constantly saying, our goal is world peace. Yeah, yeah. And in this, they say, replace peace with happiness. Yeah. Well, that was like that. also in, in Shin Ultraman or, uh, with uh, Mephilus, because he wanted like, that was his goal too. He wanted to have peace on Earth, but it was really just him enslaving Earth because he was a higher higher being compared to Earthlings. You know, it would be like more like he's the master and they're well, like all his pets. He was, like he was playing God. Yeah, yeah. And doing it in a very literal way. I don't think Shocker is quite like that yeah. but the goal is kind of the same like shin ultraman and shin godzilla this sets up a lot of stuff that just doesn't pay off but i think done very deliberately yeah this film is a story set within this universe more than it setting up a universe yeah it's like we've been literally like dropped into this world and we're not going to see conclusions of these pieces because we're just in the middle of something that's already happening, you know? I want to see more movies like that, actually. Because I, I think another movie that did this really well was Pacific Rim. Yeah, yeah. You could probably do about six other stories. You could do a story about the lobster lady. Yeah. Outside of this universe. Like, what the hell's going on with that? You could do a movie about what the hell that guy was doing. <laughs> guy was insane. I, I, I loved the bat Og. My friend, so my friend was losing his mind at the bat Og. Like, oh, really? I, yeah, like, he was... He, in a good way, he was just like chuckling, like, like just the visual of it is so absurd. <laughs> it's so it's, the visual is absolutely absurd. It's absurd. And he was like, I just kept looking over, and, like I see him because I I know how he reacts to things. He will like latch on to something and be obsessed with it. <laughs> just like that's all yeah. he'll be thinking about for a bit. <laughs> and and I love that. I like that more than uh, the lobster or the crab og. Yeah. Though I do think it's really comical how she dies. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I love how it's. Uh, I love it how it's. It's what's his name? Is it Tachibana or something like yes. that? That 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 agent. Yeah. And he's just sitting there, and you just hear it <laughs> off screen. I forgot her screaming. I forgot. Her screaming bloody murder. <laughs> And every, everyone says the only reason why that's in there is because it's kind of more of a reference to, to Cutie Honey. Oh, is it really? I, I want to watch think, Cutie Honey. I haven't watched it yet. And it's just Hideki Anno being horny <laughs> again. So. I forgot that that August yeah. just introduced as if she's going to be like the next big A threat. villain. <laughs> she's, she's introduced. <laughs> gunned off screen. I love how violent this gets to. Like, I love how the bat, Og, how do they defeat him? They just shoot him with a shotgun in the wing. And I'm like, this is wonderful. And yeah. then he's like flopping around all over the place <laughs> trying to fly away. And I'm like, this is absurd. It's awesome. Like, it really is just like, I, this is stuff I just like inherently. And it's like, to see it on a big screen is, I, it means the world to me. You get all this like Hollywood slop. And the fact that I, I now, we live in an age where we get stuff like this. It makes me really happy, honestly. And if I may just interject with this here too. Because this was the first time my friend group and I were usually really good at like 
locking in tickets for stuff like this. Shin Kamen Rider was the first time we got fucked. The screenings went up. We're usually really on point with it. We knew the date the tickets went up. We go to order tickets. Well, the date was like a Saturday or something. Tickets were supposed to go up. But I guess the theaters listed them earlier or something. Because when we checked that day, the theaters almost fucking sold out. Ooh. To the point. To the point. They opened up another show. Like, we originally bought front row yeah. tickets because that's all we can get. But then they were like, hey, we're going to do more sh uh, additional show that night because it sold out. And, like, we, we jumped off to that really quick. But I thought that was really cool that it's, like, of all the things I've gone to. And mind you, there, there were smaller theaters because it was not, like, a big budget, like, Hollywood movie. Right. Of all the things that I've struggled to get tickets for and actually really experienced a sold-out show for, Shin Kamen Rider? <laughs> was the one that was oh, yeah. both were sold out yeah like like i'm like I, awesome. I can i expect that i certainly expect that with godzilla and yeah. i certainly would expect that with ultraman two very popular characters but common rider no, common rider was because i went to the same theater for common yeah. rider that i did for ultraman common rider was way did way more business i was shocked. oh really yeah. okay i guess you can say that having your movie theater packed and having to do another day because of how packed it is. I guess you could say that that's kind of a shocker, if you will. Oh, oh, oh you. I see what you're doing. And the stream. <laughs> Cuts the black. We're done. F how would you rank these? How would you rank the trilogy? So for ranking, I think Shin Godzilla is still the undisputed king. Haha, -ha, very funny. Um, I still think it's the best one of all. I, I just, I can't not say that honestly <laughs> this is tough because i really like shin ultraman and i really like shin kamen rider but i think i have to give it to shin, shin kamen rider just because of the more film aspects to it honestly the more cinematic aspects to it that i have to give i have to give it the like the edge over shin ultraman but it's very close it's very close between the two of them for me personally i had this debate too because because i, I do like shin ultraman but to me it wasn't it was, it was a lot clear, more clear cut for me. Mine, yeah, mine, what yeah. mine goes. Shin, Shin Godzilla is the undisputed best, yeah, and, yeah, and I, like, what, what I would argue it is leaps and bounds better than Ultraman or Common Rider. My number two is is Shin Common Rider followed by Shin Ultraman, yep, yep. and that's not knocking Shin Ultraman. No, it's just no. I really liked the cinematic elements and in, yep. in the characters of Shin Common Rider. As crazy as Shin as Shin Common Rider is. Hongo is a socially awkward dork who now has to deal with the girl Rui. He's like battling <laughs> yeah, 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 for really it. <laughs> like, insane, yeah. But what? There's a <laughs> second common ride? Hey, everybody. My name's Lucas. I'm the little humble host of Power Pop on YouTube. You can find me there, or you can also find me at, at L Scribblecheck, at Power Pop on. It, it's X now, not Twitter. <laughs> um, I forgot. I, I kind of I kind of forgot. Mm. I forget too. I don't really need to pimp myself out because this is my channel. All my oh, social right. media, along with everything else and other videos to watch, are in the description below. Uh, and again, thank you so much for for joining me, Lucas, and we'll see you guys later. Have a good Have night. Have a good night.